with the torn meniscus. It's going to be AJ State and McRae who has to guard Woolbright. Well, he'll be the one that starts on him. I don't know that he'll have him for 40 minutes, but also it's going to have to be a collective effort by this Bulldogs team. Not just one guy in the Southern Conference can shut down Vontarius Woolbright. Anthony Jordan, Will Howard, Anthony Eads, the men in stripes, first place on the line. Ryland Jones dumps it inside, and a chore, a chore finishes. He arguably is the most improved player in the Southern Conference, along with Donovan Atwell at UNCG. And you see immediately the Bulldogs jump into that pressure advantage Western as they break it the first time. These teams play at different tempos. They certainly do. We talked about it in the open. Look, Western can play fast, but they don't want to play at the tempo Samford does. They can win games in the 70s and 80s. I don't think they can win one in the, in the 90s or 100s. Jackson with a shot clock at two. Yes, sir! Trey Jackson shot 44% last season behind the arc so no surprise he's shooting it well here in conference play a chore spins off the back iron the front iron and down a chore a chore last year averaged six points a game this year at nearly 16. he's similar to sam alexis at chattanooga bigs that have just really improved year over year Trey jackson dialing from deep that's what you got to do you got to take advantage of some open shots as long as the right players taking those shots against this pressure. Campbell on the curl, the floater left it short. Wolbright, who leads the Southern Conference in rebounding, pulls the rebound and gets it out to Trey Jackson. Hey partner, it won't be the first time you call his name on a rebound. They've only had 10 crowds of over 4,000 in the history of the Ramsey Center, and we are up there tonight as Wolbright gets into the paint and scores. Well, that's where he uses his size, really as a point forward. He's a lefty. He's added that right-hand dribble and finish to his game this year. Jones kicks it out. A chore swish. He leads the Southern Conference in field goal percentage over 62 percent and he's 50 percent in limited three-point shots so not a real surprise although i think justin gray can live with a chore a chore shooting a lot of threes tonight russell jones rattled it out and a chore who has all seven points for samford with the rebound chore's the kind of guy that just shows you something different every game or every second game been a year at Chipola Junior College, now in his second year in Birmingham. A chore drives on Lampton, and a foul is called on the grad transfer from the College of Charleston. Western Carolina, look, they've got their hands full stopping 14 blue. As you see his, his improvement year over year, by every metric, every statistic, he has shown terrific improvement he drives he gets in the lane he is fouled he's had to play a much larger role with jermaine marshall out yeah yeah i think if you haven't seen or followed sanford basketball this year and last year look jermaine marshall high motor he impacts winning he had 11 double doubles last year or excuse me two years ago he had a half dozen last year he was a third team all socon game so it's really it's surprising to some extent that Sanford's been able to win eight of their 15 in this streak without him. They'll, they'll get him back, but it's just going to be a couple more weeks for that guy right there. Yeah, Bucky McMillan, 63 and 37 at Sanford, a program that's made the NCAA tournament twice in 1999 and 2000. He says he coaches to his personality, and it's an aggressive one. It is, and I mean, he's he's wanted to do this since he's been on campus. They've just been hindered by injuries, illness. Even though Marshall's out, they've got everybody else this year for the first time. Russell Jones steps in, cannot connect. Second chance, left it short, but free throws coming for, no, they're gonna say over the back. That was Colin Granger who would come in for Charles Lampton. Look, I call it the three C's for Justin Gray. He's got the three-headed post monster. You see on this last play right there, Granger just pushing inside, pushes off with the left arm to corral that rebound. We saw Charles Lampton start at the center position. 
Colin Granger will come in, the transfer from Ohio U. And then we'll see Cornelius Williams a bit. And all three of those different players, but they man that post position well collectively. Campbell left it short. Wolbright with the rebound. Vontarius Wolbright, two points and two boards, one assist in the opening three and a half minutes. One of the nation's top players, and he is fouled. And what you just saw right there is he's a guy that can get the rebound, and he doesn't have to look for the outlet. He can take it right away. Justin Gray has only been a coach for five seasons. Two is an assistant at Winthrop. Three is the head coach of Western Carolina. Of course, he played with Chris Paul and led Wake Forest to the Sweet 16. Uh, he's a rising star in this business, no question. A deep one. It was partially blocked. Ryland Jones transferred from Utah State. Leaves it for McCray. A short in tight. On the baseline, Sanford Ball. We haven't talked much about Ryland Jones. You mentioned spent two years at Utah, then two years at Utah State. So he entered Sanford with 75 career starts. A little bit of an old man's game, but boy, he is not flashy, but he is ultra competitive and really a big part of this team. McCray will shoot free throws. Bucky McMillan told us that with the absence of Jermaine Marshall, Jones has been a terrific leader. We're off and running. First place on the line in the Southern Conference. A good one at the record. Averages 91 and a half points a game. In conference play, 95.5. A.J. State McCray, a junior from Delray Beach, Florida, all freshman team member a couple of years ago. He's a terrific free throw shooter, 86%. One of the best in the Southern Conference. He was on the all freshman team a couple of years ago. Bucky McMillan has a very, very deep roster and he subs liberally. Hard to play this style without doing that. No, and he has convinced his guys. Look, in, in, in recruiting, you want depth and chemistry. And because their style is, because it's recruiting friendly, they've got the kids to embrace possessions, not minutes played. Campbell left it short. Western unable to get the offensive rebound, and Sanford looks to add to the three-point advantage. McCray had a blocked out of bounds. Cornelius Williams, the former LSU Tiger. You don't see many blocks with two hands. Watch this again. He comes from the help side and gets it. Well, he doesn't quite get it with the left hand, but both are up there. Terrific help side position and defense. That's team defense at its best. Justin Gray was joking with Williams shoot around and said, your new hairdo looks like a Reggie from the Nutty Professor. Maybe a re that should not be a reset on the shot clock, and I think that's what the officials are stopping play for. On that out of bounds, they reset it to 30. Yeah, referee Will Howard, who played at Belmont, noticed the issue at the shot clock, and Bucky McMillan looks down at that play sheet. What is he looking at? What is he thinking through? Well, I think right here he's looking at what, what they're going to run on the baseline, what that play is, is. But, you know, he's also thinking about a different kinds of pressures, right, in terms of are they going to go full court man? Are they going to match up? Are they going to run some zone three quarter? They're going to throw a lot of different presses at you. Bucky McMillan played at Birmingham Southern and spent 12 years as a high school coach at Mountain Brook, where he won five Alabama state championships. Terrific cut by Jaden Campbell. I, that may have been a set play on the out of bounds, that cut. Wolbright could do nothing but just grab him to keep him from catching and finishing. First foul on Wolbright, second on Western. You see Bucky McMillan, who has essentially put together the staff that he was a player at at Birmingham Southern here. His top assistant, Mitch Cole, was a coach at Birmingham Southern. Dwayne Rebel was a coach there. And Sanford extends the lead. Little move right there by Ryland Jones. The thing with Western, though, is they're going to play pretty much three and most of the time four guards between Jones, Jackson, Woolbright, and DJ Campbell. 
as we see Samford jump into a little 2-3 zone right here. 9 nothing run for Samford. Wolbright passes and unable to finish in tight. Williams, second chance at it. Bulldogs pull the board. Mark Pelot did everything right except put it in the basket right there. Ryland Jones. Timeout, Justin Gray. Ryland Jones, he's fourth in the NCAA. Hurts offense very, very consistent. Off and flying again tonight. Those are national rankings right there. And what you don't see is sixth in turnovers forced at 18 and a half a game. Again, the kids embrace possessions per game, not minutes played per game. That's a big reason why they've got great chemistry. Of course, winning helps, but... Jackson unable to hit. What do they have to do to get the offense going? A 12-0 run right now by Samford. They've gotten it. They them out. They've had some good looks. That last possession, Jackson with a three. Pelot before that inside. Over and back, it'll be Western ball. Western's team revolves around Wolbright. What do they have to do to get Wolbright better looks? Well, look, you don't, don't change a thing, right? I mean, what, what got you here? Now, that's easier said than done for Justin Gray because of the style, the up and down. They've not faced anything like this through the first 17 games. But now they, I think at times you can take him off the ball, especially in this zone, put him at the top of the key where he can operate Try to find him right there. In fact, that's where he's positioned right now. Wolbright gets a touch. Offense goes through him. Smart. Well, that's what you want to do and, and is get it to the middle of the zone, especially when you got a guy like Wolbright who can score but is ultra unselfish. And that's the type of play there that Justin Gray thinks can spark his team. Watch Woolbright in the zone. Kamar to Trey Jackson. Nice little pass. Just a little up and under. Uses the left hand, uses the rim to screen himself. That's good basketball right there. Western's first bucket in more than four minutes. So here's the thing. Now, now Sanford's going back to man. It's kind of the game within the game. You got to like it if you love college basketball. Woolbright. 17 foot. Nothing against Nathan Johnson, but that's advantage Western all night long, one on one. Campbell in transition. How about a transition bucket off of a made basket? Yeah, that's not acceptable. Justin Gray will talk about that at the next timeout. They're going to use a timeout right here, unable to get the ball in. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the things against when you're playing Samford, you simply can't. Back inside the Ramsey Center, you see the last play. Less than two and a half seconds before that shot was up by Campbell. Ball is out, up, and in. And certainly, they, the, the Catamounts had to talk about getting the ball in against the pressure, but I'm sure Justin Gray mentioned sprint back at all times. Russell Jones hits an open man. Campbell left it short. Holloway. Boy, what a great basketball play by Pelote right there. He saw his teammate Campbell had kind of jumped in the air. He was there again for enough of interference. Justin Gray likes to use his timeouts to calm his team down. So while they used that last timeout to get the ball in, it was an opportunity for him to say, guys, it's okay, it's early, we're fine. Exactly right. Look, you can use timeouts in a variety of ways. You can use it to rest your guys, to calm them, to yell at them, to set a play. But the majority of his are just what you said, just to kind of calm him guys down. I mean, I said it before, I'll say it again. He is a rock star, one of the rising stars in the coaching profession. Campbell probing. Jones. Russell Jones Jr., the transfer from Winthrop, has had 10 or more in six of his last seven games. He's playing the best basketball of his collegiate career, and I, I think that's saying something after what he did in three years at Winthrop. A chore, a chore with the answer. 
Has he been good for the men in blue here early? Double figures in the early going, a team that's normally balanced. The Catamounts had to call that timeout. They couldn't get in, but other than that, they've been pretty good against this Sanford defense. Campbell to Jones. Pull up from 17. It'll be Sanford basketball. Sanford leads the country in offense. College basketball on CBS Sports Network, presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. Got my eye on that Chattanooga Mercer game tomorrow. Big one for both teams. Sanford has started four of five from the three point line. Justin Gray normally tries to run teams off the three point line. Leopard. He had entered play seven of his last nine from three, missed that one. Let me tell you something, he missed that. That's about as bad as you'll see a miss out of him. He changed the game against UNCG last week. He hit three threes in the late minutes of the first half. He has his engineering degree from Auburn. He's a graduate transfer. Great story, great student athlete. Jones hounded by Holloway. Jackson hit those two early threes. Let's see if they look for him. Woolbright trying to get the ball at the high post. They extend that catch. Woolbright slipped. Got the pass inside, but Williams couldn't finish. That's where Woolbright can really be effective is right there at the high post. A chore, a chore. Look, he just wasn't doing that last year. Now, they had Logan Dye, who was playing 30 minutes a game. Chor Chor coming into his into his own every single game. And he wasn't doing that a year ago from the high post. Two dribbles just getting by people at will. He's 5 of 5 in the opening 10 minutes. Campbell clanked it off the back iron. Sanford can open up a double-digit lead here. Understand now, as fast as they want to play, they can be good in the half court. Trey Jackson leads it for Woolbright. Much needed basket right there for Justin Gray's group. Just to kind of calm them and just be able to get back and set things up defensively. Woolbright's four for four with eight points to lead the Catamounts. Garrett Hicks and rejected by Williams. And that's one that'll get the fans going, but at the same time, he probably should have tried to catch that thing and keep possession of it. Watch here again on the drive. I don't know that he could have caught it, but he potentially could have kept it in play. Williams has given them good minutes. Again, all three of their post players, Lampton, Granger, and Williams, will play tonight. I love the Dallas Graziani and Russell Jones matchup. There's two, five, six little jitterbugs and sure. Big, big start to this one. Boy, he's been he's been fantastic. You mentioned five of five, a couple of threes made. He has been Absolutely fantastic. Add six rebounds and a block. He's filling the stat sheet. We're just halfway through this first half. Much deserved rest for 14. He's an Aussie from Melbourne who played a couple of years at the junior college level in Florida. Spent a couple of years prepping at Green Forest Academy in suburban Atlanta. Russell Jones, they claim at 5'8", if he's 5'8", I'm 6'5", and being guarded by 5'8", Dallas Graziani. Graziani won a national title last year at Nova Southeastern D2 ball. Trey Jackson, the pull-up. Boy, that was textbook right there. Trey Jackson saw Leopard closing out on him, under out of control. A little shot fake, one dribble. McCray had a block. Lampton had seven blocks in a game against the Citadel a week or so ago. Here's Wolbright against the double. Hell shoot two. 
That's where Wolbright will put you in a bind. Right, they pitch it ahead to him on the baseline, and he's got Ryland Jones at six foot on him. He's got six inches. Riley Allen's back just too late to recover right there, and there's a foul. Wolbright, 70% of the line this year. He's been so good out of the gate. Thursday at 2 Eastern, get ready for a can't miss showdown on the pitch as Napoli and Fiorentina face off in the Super Copa Semi here on the CBS Sports Network and streaming live on Paramount Plus. Justin Gray just never gets too worked up. His team was down double figures, right back to a six point contest. Well, he knows he's got a good team. Year three, they've gone from 11 wins to 18. And now 15 just halfway through this college basketball season. Freshman from Charlotte, Allen Spock, working in the post against Lampton. Got it out to Ryland Jones, the floater, no. And there was Charles Lampton, he, he affected that shot. Jackson, couldn't hit, Wolbright recycles. Goes up against traffic and had a block. Staten McCray got it. Graziani leaves it for Staten McRae. See, the, the guards have played a lot of minutes right here in white. Justin Gray has been able to rotate those three bigs, but Jones, Woolbright, Jackson, even Campbell to some extent. A lot of minutes here in a fast-paced game. Jones got a step and got to the bucket. So explosive, so low to the ground, just a tough guard. Jones and Trey Jackson played AAU ball as kids growing up. Part of the reason that Jones wanted to transfer to play with his buddy. Second chance rattled out. And now Western Carolina can cut this down to a one possession game. Here comes Jones attacking on the wing. Wolbright nowhere close, but Lampton kept it alive. It's the one phase of Wolbright's game, just not a prolific three-point shooter. Just 26% career. He's going to make a lot of money at this game, but if he really wants to make big money, he's got to improve in that area. Campbell. And Wolbright was fouled. Western Carolina took a blower two. They're right back in it. Four point game in the Ramsey Center. Dean, it's the players. Uh, yeah, you can say that again. It's 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 always about the players. Russell Jones. Having a guy like Wolbright, joining him with Trey Jackson and Russell Jones, they've got a really good roster. They just simply haven't had that roster here a lot. Yeah, it, look, it started last year. They, gave, they beat ETSU in Nashville in the tournament and then could have beaten Furman in regulation. A mall they could handle loss by three in overtime. Wolbright at 30 and 11 in that one. And as you know, Furman went on to win the Southern Conference and then beat Virginia in the NC2A tournament. Wolbright trying to shake that off just a little. Wolbright and Jones and Jackson essentially play the entire game. They are three of the top ten in the SoCon in minutes, so you're going to see a ton of them. Those are the guys. Sanford will go 12 deep. Western Carolina seven, sometimes eight. Now that Kamar Robertson's back, just about healthy from that back injury that's been nagging him really since middle of non-conference play. Jackson had to beat the shot clock, left it short. Campbell to the rim. One of the largest crowds in recent memory at the Ramsey Center. Pelode in the corner. To the bucket. You've got to guard him out to three, and he was able to get by his defender, but a little bit out of control there on the finish. Jones, the veteran, back to a chore. Swish again. A chore, a chore is six for six and three for three from deep. And I know part of the game plan by the Western staff was, hey, we'll live with these bigs of Sanford shooting some threes, but at some point, you got to start making them put it on the floor. A chore, a chore doesn't shoot a ton of threes. He entered playing his career 17 of 38, 45%. 
most of those this year, 13 to 26. Open as Wolbrecht, not really his game. And he was a little bit strong. Jones carving him up to a chore hole, shoot two, as Lampton is called for his second. Something to watch, too, is who Wolbright is having to guard. You know, it's been Riley jo Ryland Jones the last couple possessions. There's really not a weak spot on this Samford roster. As you watch this last play, able to turn the corner, a little dump down to a chore, a chore. Question of foul, but you know, what I mean by that with Wolbright, he's going to have to really exert himself at the defensive end tonight, too. Sanford averages 91 and a half points a game. They knock home almost 11 threes a contest. What makes their offense tick? Well, it, it's a combination of things, right? I mean, they're really good in transition. Like, they average 14 and a half turnovers, and that's too much for most conventional coaches, a couple too many. But when you consider how many possessions they have per game, it really isn't a high number. So they're under control most of the time. Bucky McMillan does not recruit people who can't shoot the ball. And then they've got some high IQ guards mixed in with winners, right? Dallas Graziano, I mean, he was something like 67-1 and in his career at Nova Southeastern, won a national championship. Last year, only the sixth ever unbeaten D2 national championship. This is going to stay with Western Carolina. That looked like that might have gone off. Two, watch this high-low action. Woolbright throws it only where his teammate can catch it. You see Graziani. Yeah. Graziani with a nice defensive deflection right there. Shot clock at five. Woolbright back door. The reverse. They're going to call it offensive interference on Cornelius Williams. No basket. Yeah, that was the right call. Watch it right here. It's on the rim. Not sure it was going to go or not, but that's an easy call by the official. Will Howard, the official, telling us the ball was in the cylinder. And they'll review it at the next dead ball. That's one of the new rules here in the 23-24 season. On the curl, the ticks. Campbell swings it to a chore. Woolbright. It'll go to the arrow and it will stay with Western Carolina. Samford, a double digit lead. Bucky McMillan's team has come on the road looking to extend the winning streak to 16, a nation's best. Dashing, you see just two turnovers for the Catamounts. And you'd think, boy, they've played 16 and a half minutes. That's really good in this style. But they're only shooting 32%. And as you say, 3 of 14 from the 3. Not a recipe to win. And the Bulldogs continue to mix up their half-court defense. During the break, the officials confirmed that basket interference on Western Carolina. Wolbright from 15. He was fouled. Fouled by Nathan Johnson. Again, Woolbright so good operating at the high post. He's a guy that generally is going to make the right play to the right player. You look at his stats and you think, you know, does he take? Is he a high volume shooter? Not really. He's a high volume passer. He's been the conference player of the week six times this year. The SoCon record is Steph Curry, who did it eight times. That's good company for sure. You see nine straight double-doubles, and one of those was a triple-double last week at ETSU. A controversial triple-double. The stick back, Pelote could not get it to go. It's the second time Pelote had been able to finish something in close. 
the tenth assist in that game for Fulbright originally was not ruled an assist as Garrett Hicks has it spin out and later they went back and looked at the video and decided it was a tenth assist. Well, it, it, the home team is the official scorekeeper so it's not like he got home cooking. People in Johnson City, Tennessee decided on that. It was a skip pass, an up fake one dribble pull up, and they said it assisted on the basket. Campbell missed badly. Western Carolina is shooting right around 30%. A chore, meanwhile, misses. He is off to a terrific start. He's six of eight. Here's Campbell in transition. Campbell from eight. Keeping it alive, Wolbright, an easy one. And I'm not sure I would say this at the beginning of the game, but right now I think Western has to get some easy baskets. They got to get out in transition. They're just not shooting it well enough against this stout Samford half-court defense. The foul before the shot on Williams. So Wolbright has 11 points and five rebounds. He's five of seven shooting for Western Carolina, but. Justin Gray is going to need his supporting crew to help out. Yeah, whether that's Jackson or Jones, they've got to step up and make some shots. Jackson hit his first two threes, and we thought he was off to the races. Yeah, he's missed his last four. Nice job right there by Jones Jr. to put himself at the free throw line. He knew that Jones was right behind him, so he slowed the dribble up collected the foul. He's going to go shoot a one and one. Jones began his college career at Winthrop. He was recruited by then coach Pat Kelsey and two of his teammates. One other, Chase Claxton, went to Winthrop and then Kelsey got the job at College of Charleston. Justin Gray was on the staff with Kelsey. Meanwhile, Mark Prosser was the coach at Western Carolina. He went from Western to Winthrop, and Justin Gray went from Rock Hill up to Cullowee. And Jones, after a year with Prosser in Rock Hill, moved up to play for Justin Gray here. I'm trying to follow that. Yeah, but. I was going to say, you, you need a map. Yeah, no, a I get it. And, 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 you know, for Jones, he's just a winner, right? He played in three Big South Championship games in three years in Rock Hill. One of those equated to an NC2A tournament. A chore, a chore, going to work. The hook, yes again. Ranger raises his hands and looks up for Coach Gray. Like, I did everything I could. He was feeling my physicality. That was just better offense than good defense. He has 21 first half points. His career high is 26. Oh, Vontarius Wobro! My goodness. His elevator does have an extra floor. A chore spins back. Mark it down at the 120 mark. Wolbright with the dunk. Watch it here again, right down Main Street. Right over the best rim protector Sanford has. A chore, a chore. There's defining moments in every game. Is that one of them that like pulls this Western crowd back into it? And more importantly, does it pull the Catamounts closer as we inch to halftime? It's been a long time since the Ramsey Center sounded like this. For a venue that's 35 plus years old, they have kept this in great shape, done some nice work around. It is a really good basketball venue. Jones against Graziani. Jones spins, fires. Campbell runs it down, reverse layup. Wolbright may have gotten a piece of it. Good transition defense there by Western Carolina. Trey Jackson had it slapped away by Staten McRae. And McRae hits. They could have run out the clock and played for the final shot. Instead, Sanford ups the lead to eight, and the Catamounts will have the final opportunity. Big possession right here for Western. No doubt the ball's going to be in Woolbright's hands to make the decision. Wolbright for three. 
probably not the decision that Justin Gray would have wanted. No, and he doesn't settle like that too often. I've seen him play an awful lot. He'll usually use his size and ability to handle to get up and under guys. Practice something in practice as much as you want, but it's nothing like game action with the lights on. Ryland Jones, long baseball pass to a chore. It was broken up by Trey Jackson, and it's an eight-point game. At Let's see if you're Bucky McMillan, the good stat is you held Western to 31% in the, from the field, but you only turned them over three times, and they're within striking distance. If you're Justin Gray, you're like, hey, I don't know that we played our best. We're going to be okay. Right to a chore for two more. Introduce me to the coach who's happy after 20 minutes, regardless of the score. I haven't seen one of those. Terrific call by McMillan, though. Trey Jackson, right to a the floater, left it short. Second chance for DJ Campbell and the foul. Campbell's a guy that went scoreless there in the first half, played 13 minutes. He's an interesting candidate to really help pick this Catamon team up. He was just right place, right time there and finished with strength. He's a guy that knows how to score. He was a 2,000 point score in high school. His minutes now are really, really good and his play's been good. He's just kind of a forgotten man when you're talking about Jones, Jackson, and Woodbright in that backcourt. He had 60 in a game in high school. Let me tell you, you know how to score. Jones against Jackson. A chore. Didn't get it to roll through, and Wolbright pulls the rebound. Nice decision by Wolbright. He could have he could have attacked the rim. He attacks. Had it blocked by a chore. He's done a little bit of everything, although limping just a little bit coming down after that block. And remember, Sanford continues to be without Jermaine Marshall, arguably their best player. He's going to be out at least two more weeks and perhaps up to a month with that torn meniscus. Coach Bucky McMillan told us it's gone slower than he expected the rehab process. It has. And he's a guy that McMillan could have had guard Woolbright. He did so last year with some success. Marshall 6'6", and really kind of a forward, but athletic enough to get out and guard on the perimeter. You know, think about this. They got a 15-game winning streak. They're, they're playing for first place tonight, and arguably without one of your best players. Trey Jackson. A chore is being taped behind the Samford bench, but they'll go inside anyway to Allsbach, the freshman from Charlotte, who couldn't get it to go. Allsbach's been good. They love him in this program. Originally, it signed at Western Kentucky when there was a coaching change. Took the opportunity to come join this program, and he's been really good. Russell Jones on the take, got it up and in. Yeah, I think Jones knows how to utilize his lack of height to score over big guys. There's just enough English on that to get over the outstretched arms. Staden McRae couldn't answer. Russell Jones has played a game or two. This is 134th college basketball game. He's closing in on a thousand career points. Wolbright swings. Jackson flings. I don't know that anybody but Wolbright saw Jackson in the corner. Terrific pass. Didn't lead to an assist, though. Graziani lost it. A tie-up, and the arrow will stay with Samford. Ricky McMillan was talking to us this morning at shoot-around about how even though he's first year in this program, Graziani, really the heart and soul. He sets the press. He's the hardest worker in practice. And you see a chore, a chore. Looks like he's ready to go again after getting taped. Ryland Jones, the finger roll. And Bucky McMillan jumping up and down. He wants the press. Western's a tough team to press with those guards. There's too many ball handlers out there. 
and ball handlers with experience. Western has only given it away three times. Well, they haven't picked their dribble up either, which is like when you pick your dribble up, you're in essence, you're guarding yourself. They've done a nice job keeping that dribble alive. Shot clock down to two, a deep one for Jones. Nobody in position right there to rebound to try to recycle the possession. Pull up for Jones. And a foul underneath on Western Carolina. Number three on Charles Lampton, the former College of Charleston Cougar. Hampton's given him good minutes. Colin Granger just played a, a minute or so in that first half. As you see, Achora Chor back in the game. All of the bigs for Western, Williams and Granger and Lampton, had two first half fouls. Again, they, they don't always play two of them together. It's just usually one with those four guards. So no real worries by Justin Gray having to rotate those guys. Ryland Jones spinning, pivoting. Campbell with a shot clock, windling down. He was fouled by Granger. You know, Western Carolina's lost only two games this year, and a couple of their bigs missed both of those games. Losses to Gardner Webb and High Point. No doubt. Watch this again. 32 and White Granger. Is there enough body or arm there? Boy, that's a close one. Obviously, the home crowd didn't like it. You got to love it, right? In the second half, it's the Bojangles. Biscuit miss if you miss the if you miss the first and the second Everybody in the crowd gets a biscuit, but Campbell shuts him up Campbell's an 83% free throw shooter hits one out at two that Extends the Sanford lead to eight What do they have to do to get Wolbright going? Well, I, I think he's been going he's plays with pace, right? He's not always flashy I think Just finding him in the right spots He's got to rebound a little bit better as well. Granger couldn't finish. Samford can extend this lead to double figures. A chore, a chore. Working on a career night. Russell Jones fouls Ryland Jones. Samford led by eight at halftime. They maintain that advantage here. I'm a smart bass, so smart. It makes me better than... ...informational what it's done for college basketball and then at the NBA level, what Steph Curry and others have done. Big part of the game creates spacing and movement. A chore, a chore, left it short. The pass on that three-pointer came from Kevin Young, the point guard. I talked to him before the game and I said, were you the second option on the play? He said, when Radar shot it, Radar made it. And that's Russell Jones with the three for Western Carolina. Catamounts hanging around. Hey, look, their stats aren't gaudy right now. A little too strong for a chore on the pass by Ryland Jones. Something tells me that Western's got this run in them to get this crowd into it. Watch the last three that was penetration by Woolbright and he's going to find the open man if you're open he's going to make the right pass and hit you right in the shooting pocket Jones with a shot clock at five had it fall out Granger controls the rebound you're fortuitous it took a bounce back to him or it was going to go over the other end to a chore for the putback Catamounts have trailed by as many as 11, looking to cut it to a single possession game, and it rattled out. Ronnie Carr was eventually drafted in the first round, but was involved in an automobile accident that really derailed his career. He's called it a blessing in disguise, though, because he's become a motivational speaker, and he's used that platform effectively. Yeah, he spoke to the team. We saw this last play. Jones with the 16-footer didn't go. And then it clearly went off Granger's left hand. But we heard Ronnie Carr speak to this Western Carolina team today, and he was terrific. Great lesson. It wasn't about basketball. It was about preparing yourself for life. 
a chore. Is the defense on him better in the second half? Well, right there it was. Granger able to use his physicality, his strong body. You don't see Jones Jr. making a bad decision very often. Samford has won 15 straight games, a school record, tied with Utah State for the most in the country. Western Carolina is on a nine-game winning streak. If they were to win today, it would be their longest winning streak in 50 years. A chore drills the left wing three, his fourth triple tonight. The big fella came to play today. Boy, he has been fantastic. 26 points, a career high for a chore. The pocket pass, Wolbright, and the foul! And you know what you gotta love right there? You watch Wolbright. It's not about Flash, it's not about him. Here's the last play. Jones finds a chore outside. Then at the other end, Woolbright finishing the stars shine in the last two possessions. Woolbright, there's not a lot of emotion, there's not a lot of flash. You say that about Ryland Jones and Achora Chor as well. Really, a lot of these guys, they just they're about winning on both teams. And that's why you're seeing success both at 15 and 2 and 4 and 0 in the Southern Conference. Woolbright has 16 points and nine rebounds, so he's going to knock down another double-double. He's had them in nine consecutive games. I don't know, like, if you're not an average basketball fan, if you know how hard that is to do at any level, but especially at the Division I level. Like, he just falls out of bed with double-figure points and rebounds, and, you know, he's messing with assists many times for triple-doubles. He's just a fantastic player that plays at his own pace and now employing this crowd to get on their feet. Only guy in the country averaging 20 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists a game. Campbell to a chore. Yes, again! A chore, a chore has 29 points. Let me make it clear, this was part of the scouting report. Make a chore and make the Sanford Bulldogs beat you outside, but again, at some point, He's beat you too often. You may have to tweak this a little bit. He's got five threes tonight. He had 17 in the rest of his career. He entered play 17 of 38 in his career from deep. And this one makes him a chore, a chore, right? Like, he's got 29. Showing a little emotion right there, and rightfully so. I mean, he literally is keeping Samford ahead. He's 5 of 8 from 3 in the game. His previous season high was 2. Coach Bucky McMillan said, a chore, a chore, learned how to shoot in the offseason. Wow, has that shown. He, he really benefited by playing with some guys last year, Logan Dye in particular. love to see guys develop and we've seen that so often in the Southern Conference and other conferences like this but boy in this day and age of the transfer portal guys just don't stick around and it's a shame. Wolbright couldn't get that underhand scoop to go. Josh Holloway is fouled. The double-double for a short tonight is only the second of his season. Let me let me say this, I mean, he's been on people's radar. There's no question. What I mean by people's radar, if he wasn't, he's now tonight national television audience. And with these gaudy stats, there are power fives that are now looking. And he's got 29, the rest of the team 19. They're saying to themselves, let's see what NIL can do for us come March. There's Bucky McMillan, who is really happy to have a chore, a chore. How do you assess everything else, Sanford, tonight, aside from the guy who's having a career evening? Well, look, they have not turned the Catamounts over. I think he likes the energy that his team is playing with. 
and they've been able to kind of keep this six, eight, ten point cushion most of the game. But he also knows how explosive these Catamount guards can be. So there's no no doubt he's unsettled. Robertson threw it into the corner, lucky to get it back. Gives Jones and Woolbright a couple of minutes, probably around the next media timeout that occurs under 12 minutes. Good coaching move by Justin Gray. Robertson down the lane line, the floater short. Both teams gone to the bench just a little bit. Again, the game within the game. Johnson fades and fires. And without Russell Jones or Woolbright, Trey Jackson's going to have to do his thing. Can't hit the baseline, Shea, but a second chance at it as Palut retrieved the carom. Robertson kind of telegraphed that pass to DJ Campbell. It's a turnover, and Hicks lost it. And it's gotten sloppy right here. Campbell drives, hangs, and hits. And when it gets sloppy, I think Western can play with, with Sanford. What I mean by sloppy, it gets a little fast. Neither team wants turnovers, but I think that Justin Gray is trying to figure out how can we steal a possession here or there. It's really not been easy in the half court all night. Holloway got in tight and scored off the window. Well, he knew Granger doesn't have that length or athleticism that Williams or Lampton do. Knew he could elevate and get that shot over him. Jackson into the corner. Palote unable to connect. Western has really struggled from deep. And most of their threes have been good. On balance, feet are set. They really haven't taken a lot of bad ones. Woolbright took that one at the end of the first half. With a second and a half to go. Otherwise, they just have not been able to make threes. Offensive foul on Samford. Western Carolina is 4 of 20 from outside the arc. They're hanging. It's 51-42 Sanford looking for a 16th straight win. 7 of 15 from 3. Western Carolina is 4 of 20 from outside the arc after hitting two very early. Trey Jackson knocked on those two early, got the Catamounts going. And your point is 2 of 18 cents. Boy, nice job by McMillan switching up defenses, although the Catamounts have done a nice job finding Woolbright at the high post against that zone. 19 for Woolbright, who has nine rebounds. He's 8 of 13 shooting. A chore, a chore. A hold on Russell Jones of Western Carolina, his second. It's Jones second. He's one of the linchpins. They need him down the stretch here to be able to break that press and make plays really when things break down. Lampton and Granger, two bigs for Western, the only players in the games with three fouls. Achora Achora had a block by Williams. Wolbright attacking. Hero step to the bucket. The stick back dunk by Cornelius Williams. Williams does it at both ends. Ryland Jones banks at home off that front of the iron. It feels like every time Western gets close, there's an answer. Yeah, they've had an answer on the road. Jones right there, a guy with a ton of experience. Again, not always flashy, a little bit of an old man's game, but boy, is he effective. 11 points, five assists, no turnovers for the former Utah Ute. Also played at Utah State. Russell Jones. 
They're going to call Cornelius Williams for clearing out the lane. Williams has given them some energy at both ends. Right, he had the block, and then when Woolbright couldn't finish, he did emphatically. Now Samford in the bonus. In fact, both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. As a team, Samford shoots 74% at the free throw line. Their, their stats are gaudy. Right? This isn't just a team that runs up and down the court and scores 100 points. Bucky McMillan's got a true system. And these guys believe in the system. They lead, they lead the Southern Conference in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and free throw percentage. Shore is a 74% free throw shooter, but missed the front end of the one and one and Western looking to close the gap. Campbell. Can't let him get too comfortable against that zone. Ryland Jones got a step and got to the cup. Well, he just, he went by his defender like he had, was wearing cement boots, like... He is really talented. Fifth year senior against a sophomore just got that step and finished. Russell Jones sets. Double team comes. Swings it to Palote. Had it knocked away. Campbell thought about that three. And the shot clock dwindles under 10. Campbell one on one. He settled there just a little bit against a chore. I thought he should have attacked the rim right there. Particularly being in the bonus. We made a good point a couple minutes ago. Every time this crowd tries to get into it, Samford has had an answer at the offensive end. Jones has a bigger defender on him. Jones against Williams and gets it inside for Nachor Leo. Little two-man game right there. Jones. Ryland Jones just sees the floor so well. Yeah, there's a reason he's had zero games where he's had more turnovers and assists this season. Entered the game sixth in the country in assisted turnover ratio, and he has not turned the ball over today. Wolbright against half of the Bulldogs to Campbell. A three, he was fouled. Three shots coming for Western Carolina. Sanford by nine. Can they hold on? Not just that. You gotta find shots going to the rim. They gotta get them from the free throw line. Jones is two of seven from three. Jackson is two for eight. They need those secondary options to deliver. Yeah, some second chance points, right? They just have five on the night. Now that suggests Sanford's done a terrific job on the defensive finishing the defensive play with the box out and rebound. Three shots here for DJ Campbell. <laughs> Sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, 2,000 point scorer in high school. Average 25 a game his senior year, a 71% free throw shooter. He's a guy last year that was not on the all Southern Conference freshman team. And I, I boy, that to me was just baffling. But he had solid minutes. He averaged almost 21 minutes a game last year as a freshman. That said, he started all 18 now this season, and his numbers are up. His confidence is up. Western Carolina has won nine straight. Sanford 15 in a row. Bucky McMillan's team is 15 and two. Is that the foul? Is that the play that can spark the Catamounts? Well, mark it down, it's 644. As much as we've talked about the Western guards, equally, Graziani and Jones have been the guys that have gotten the chore chore the basket. They've not turned the ball over. They've been really good themselves. Ryland Jones has six assists and no turnovers. Job by Achor right there, just hard hedge trying to get the ball out of Woolbright's hands. Russell Jones, shot clock at two. Campbell's got to go. This stick back by 
Lambton. Well, and that happened because Achora Achora had to come out and defend Campbell, and then that left Lambton all by himself with the tip in. Four straight for Western Carolina. Sanford's had an answer every time. Achora is fouled. Fouled by Lambton, his fourth. Western just hasn't had an answer for that two-man game. You know, they'll, they'll, they've gone over the ball screen by a chore. They've gone underneath. Lampton right there tried to help, and then it was too late recovering, and clearly a foul with contact right there. A chore is four of six at the line on the season 74%. The thing that makes it so difficult is Jones in particular, but Graziani also, they make the right play, whether they turn the corner for themselves or they get it back to a chore, and then he can put it on the floor and face you up, or he can roll, so he can pick and pop or pick and roll. Far the best game of chore Achora has had in a Sanford uniform, coming at the right time on the road, and what is you, you would think has been a hostile environment, but this crowd has never been able to get quite to the level that Justin Gray and his, his program wanted to get to. Crowd north of 5,000, the third largest in Ramsey Center in history. Woolbright against a chore. Spins, his shot blocked. It was a foul, two shots for Woolbright. Uh, we'll have to watch that one again as, as the fans taunt a chore a chore. That's his third. Woolbright so crafty, but he also recognizes a chore as a good defender. They called it on Staten McRae, the secondary okay. defender. Yep, coming over with the trip, so to speak. Again, that's where Woolbright puts you in those tough spots. He can back you down. Then he can elevate over a smaller defender, and if he brings a chore, a chore, or your big away from the basket, then he's going to find somebody else. Staten McRae has to exit his fourth foul as Bucky McMillan discusses things with Anthony Jordan. That's a big call at this point in the game because State McRae is one of those guys that has been tasked with kind of following Wolbright around all game. Woolbright over 20 points for an 11th time this year. This is this is now getting critical time where the Catamounts need to come up with some stops and figure this two-man game out. And Shore deep in the pivot goes by and scores. Well, he, he's just had his way, right? And Western has chosen not to double team him. And so one-on-one, -on -one, he's going against the stronger. Granger or the more physical Williams or Lampton. Russell Jones Jr. Now you asked earlier, was that the play that maybe turned the tide a little bit? I think that three right there, mark it down with just under five minutes to go as Sanford goes back to that two man game. At Shore, spins, fires left, and short. This is as close as the game has been since seven minutes to go in the first half. What do you want offensively if you're Justin Gray? You want the ball in Woolbright's hands to make a decision against Johnson. Woolbright got deep in offensive foul! Yeah, he dipped the shoulder. Nice job by Jones moving his feet. Excuse me, Johnson. Jones. Justin Gray telling his team, calm down. We're just fine. Get back and play good on defense. Watch it here again. Dip that left shoulder just enough outside the restricted arc. Timeout on the court. What does Sanford have to do? Well, they've got to continue to put points on the board. And then conversely, Western Carolina, they've got it, but the stars have to shine at this point. Whether it's Woolbright, Jones, or Trey Jackson. Ryland Jones, Lipton out, out of bounds, stays with Samford. Interesting for Samford, they lead the nation in bench points at almost 40 a game, just three tonight. 
three-pointer, excuse me, a field goal and a free throw by Josh Holloway is all they've gotten off the bench. Of course, when a guy like this, 14, puts 35 on you. He went right by, couldn't score, but Campbell did, and now they're going to look at it. They're going to go to the video and take a look. They called that quickly, but it gives the official the right then to go to the monitor to make sure that it is the right call. Boy, it is building to a good one. Sanford leads by a half dozen. Campbell, yeah, just got by Wolbright. That doesn't happen very often. Just a straight line run to the rim for the putback. Now every possession under four so critical for Western Carolina. Wolbright has 21, Russell Jones has 15 for Justin Gray's Catamounts, who are 15 and 2, riding a nine game winning streak. Wolbright kicks out, open, Campbell, yes! Uh, credit Wolbright for having the patience and the presence of mind to break that zone down and find the open man. Campbell is only a career 27% three-point shooter, but 36% this year. In tight, stayed in McCray, got a great position, used the angle, chance for a three-point play. Just like that. Again, we said it in the first half as we watch Woolbright. He goes against Jones. The defense collapses. Everybody gets caught ball watching. He finds Campbell, but right there in the blink of an eye, Boy, terrific little curl pass by Campbell to State McRae. Back to six point lead for the Bulldogs. They're not going to stop that full court pressure. Give credit. To Western Carolina, just a couple of turnovers. They've handled the pressure well tonight. Wolbright, six times the SoCon Player of the Week this year. A favorite for the Lou Henson Award to Jones. Russell Jones Jr.'s fourth three-pointer of the night. Now, we call Wolbright a dude. Jones and Jackson got a little dude in him as well. defense right there. They kind of figured out that little two-man game between Achor and Jones. Ryland Jones knocks home a huge three. Another answer by the Bulldogs. That is absolutely the answer. I thought that was a step outside Jones' range. Now you got to match him if you're Western. Ryland Jones has 16. Trey Jackson got a step, second chance, Lampton scores. And that's the thing, when Western's been able to get by their man, and you put a chore in that help position, then there's nobody to box out a guy like Lampton. Four-point game, under two to go. Sanford's won 15 straight. Western's on a nine-game streak. Shown circling. Campbell left it short. Western clears the rebound. Can cut it to one possession. Russell Jones. Great box out on that last possession by Trey Jackson. Won't show up in the stat sheet, but he kept State McCray from corralling that board. Justin Gray is going to use a timeout. How does Justin Gray get his team a high-quality look? Look, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a recap. The guys need 18 seconds, plenty of time. Put the ball in the hands of Jones or Woolbright. Let them make some plays at this point against this man defense. Woolbright guarded 40 feet from the basket. Campbell, the shot clock at three, turns it over. Staten McRae is doubled, pitches it ahead. Campbell, the dunk! Nice job of turning defense into offense in a hurry by the Bulldogs. Now it forces a different kind of mentality for Western. Down six under a minute to go. Jones a deep one. Yes, again! No need to foul. Sanford ball. 
Russell Jones disrupted that. He certainly did. Should the shot clock reset here? No, watch this. He he back tipped it, and then those two just going at each other. Nice no call by the officials. And then Trey Jackson was actually out of bounds while he was touching the ball. You don't think this game means something? Three, four guys on the floor. Has the arrow. Ball security with Jones in the backcourt. Ryland Jones to the bucket. Wolbright gets it to Russell Jones. Now as the clock runs, I was going to say, you either got to call a timeout or you're going to have to shoot a three. Style of play is risk-reward, so not surprising. Wolbright is fouled. They foul early with 10.3 to go. Two fouls, there are two shots, excuse me, for the Catamounts. And Sanford still in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Wolbright is 70%. He's collected his 10th consecutive double-double. No thought of missing the second, right? No, and I had that wrong. Western in a one-on-one. -on -one. Samford in the double bonus. So that was a big shot fought by Woolbright. Now at this point, if it goes in, you're going to press and you hope to trap once before a foul. Woolbright hits them both. One-point game, 10.3 to go. Jones fouled by Campbell. Ryland Jones is a 70% free throw shooter. They didn't want to foul State McCray. That's their best free throw shooter at over 86%. Jones is two for two at the line today. Samford is 13 of 17. If he hits them both, Bucky McMillan's going to foul again. Yeah, no doubt he will. Jones is a veteran. He's been in some hostile environments, but... These are two critical shots. <laughs> Nothing but net, my friend. Western is out of timeouts. Grad student from Logan, Utah, who played at Utah and Utah State, hits both three-point games. Johnson just signals to his teammates. We're getting a foul here. Wolbright at midcourt. Johnson's going to get him. Now it's Russell Jones who is fouled. So a really alert play by Nathan Johnson because there's no reason to foul 40 feet out until there's a danger of a shot going up. Let another half a second roll off the clock. Yeah, they, that worked out perfectly for Sanford. They were able to burn time right there. And you see Johnson just reach in on Jones. Bucky McMillan told me today that you can't go overboard with results. It's the process. You have to do things by the book, by the numbers. Fouling up three is the correct play analytically. Yeah, and everybody in the NBA would tell you that. I don't know that every college coach would. But they certainly do in the professional level now. Russell Jones is a 69% free throw shooter. Question. The question is, does he make it, or does he intentionally try to miss it? St. Louis Dayton game underway, now available, streaming free on the CBS Sports app, or at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll get you out there as soon as this one concludes. Missed the second, Sanford controls the rebound. Staten McCray can ice the game at the free throw line. 
teams will play again in Birmingham. Watch the miss by Jones right here. Hits the back and just doesn't bounce their way. State McRae right there to take it down. He knocks down both. It's all but over. If he misses the second, you got to take the ball off the basket and fire it up. No timeouts remaining. If he makes the first, the second is good either way for Sanford. The second free throw goes in, you're good. If you miss, you're looking at an 85-foot heave. Staden McRae calmly hits the first. 86% free throw shooter. It takes a prayer now. These Bulldogs just, they bent, they bent, but they never broke. Never allowed the Catamounts to take the lead in the second half. Where you're playing everybody home and away throughout the season. That did not touch anyone until it was run down by a chore. A chore 